As the typhoon approaches and conditions worsen, the master, following normal practice, turns to keep the waves at a slight angle to the bow. The vessel begins to take heavy waves of increasing frequency and intensity over the bows. The foredeck stores hatch cover is carried away so that the bosun's store space fills with every wave over the bow, probably filling in less than an hour. As the main force of the typhoon approaches, the seas worsen even more, with substantial green seas crashing onto the foredeck. Damage occurs to deck fittings. The ventilator tops are carried away, leaving the ventilators open to the sea. The four-peak ballast tank takes on water with every wave, and in some 12 hours is more or less filled. The vessel becomes more sluggish, and 25-meter waves sweep over the bow, putting pressure on the first three to four hatches. A large wave crashes over the starboard side of the bow, destroying the hatch covers on number one hold, allowing thousands of tons of water into the hold. All forward freeboard and reserve buoyancy is lost. Number two hold hatch covers collapse under the weight of water. The next hatch cover is driven inwards by wave pressures as number one tanks implode. This process rapidly dominoes along the length of the vessel, becoming increasingly violent as the ship slips below the seas and the angle increases. Shock waves traverse the structures, weakening them and making them more susceptible to collapse towards the aft end of the ship. Implosions at the forward end of the slop tanks rupture the engine room structures. The pump room and part of number nine hold and the weight of the engine tear out the double bottom. The stern immediately fills, sinking below the surface. The accommodation, already seriously damaged, separates below the surface. The time elapsed between the collapse of number one hold hatches and the sinking of the stern is about two minutes. 